So I left the cannon at home. Hey guys, Omar here for another Fuji X-T20 video. I have a fun story to share with you. On Saturday, I shot an event with my normal rig, but on Sunday, we had a family party. And those of you that are photographers know that if you go to a family party, they want you to take pictures. So I usually bring the Canon and I decided, you know what, let me bring the Fuji X-T20 and see if it can perform in the same conditions uh, because it was, you know, low light, it was at a venue. And could it give me the same look that the Canon 5D Mark IV gave me? Let me show you my normal rig, okay? First, the Canon 5D Mark IV with the 17 to 40 millimeter L lens, the 600EX2 RT flash, and to top that all off, my favorite, bam! The Rogue Flash Bender extra large on top of the camera. And I look completely ridiculous. So I look ridiculous, but I love this setup. The Rogue Flash Bender is uh, a great way to, you know, I shoot light, bounce light off the ceiling and the Rogue Flash Bender just gives a little bit of light forward, which I love. A little cumbersome, a little crazy, but this is my event setup for receptions and for dance party. I want people when they look at my photographs to feel like they're in the party, like they're dancing, like they're screaming with the people. Uh, so my pictures are very punchy, very bright colors, and I feel that like, goes with the mood of the party. So this is my normal event rig. So that was Saturday. I decided to leave this whole setup home and bring the Fuji X-T20. And what I wanted to see is, could I get kind of the same look that I get from my Canon 5D Mark IV with the whole setup and the Rogue Flash Bender and all that? Now, what I didn't want to do was show up to the party like this. You know, I mean, that looks completely ridiculous. <laughs> And then it would look like I'm working and I wanted kind of to be a little bit more discreet. I was not gonna use the little pop-up flash that's on there at all. I mean, forget that. And so what I decided to use was the Yongno uh, YN564 flashes. These are manual flashes, which the Fuji can fire. What's awesome about them is if you start to get into doing flash photography, you can buy this little uh, YN560TX. It's a manual. You can actually put this on top of your Fuji, like so. Boom. And you can shoot off camera, like through an umbrella or in a softbox or something like that. So it's a nice first flash to get because, you know, you could start with it on top of your camera. And then as you start to, like, if you want to do more, you know, like headshots or parties or things like that, you want to start, you know, your model shoots. You can take this off the camera, which is what eventually you want to do, and buy this little receiver. And you can have, um, you know, up to six of these flashes that you can control from the top of this thing. So I recommend that as the first flash. It's also cheap. These guys are cheap uh, and they work great. I use them all the time. This is how I used it, by the way. I actually just had it up like this and I decided so I wouldn't be so crazy like <sighs> sailboat. <laughs> with the Rogue Flash Bender, I just use the little card here just to shoot up at the ceiling and give a little bit of a catch light in the person's eye and to try to fill in some of the shadows. So let me show you some of those pictures and walk you through what I was thinking, uh, what happened with the camera, okay? All right, so when I arrived to the venue, I took an ambient exposure. So the room was pretty dark. So usually I live around 1600th ISO. Uh, or 3200 ISO and my shutter speeds around 60th of a second or 100th to let some ambient room in. I then turned on the flash and got a little bit of flash exposure on my uh, on the guests of the party and it pretty much matches what I'm looking for. So this is pretty much the look I was going for. The flash power you have to go up and down. Here's an example of where the flash power was a little too low uh, so you may have to turn it up uh, but I was getting really nice shots from the Fuji. This is just the ambient room. Uh, got some really nice shot of shrimp here. Delicious, finally got to eat. And the colors and everything, I shot jo uh, JPEG and RAW, also known as JAW. <laughs> and uh, I was completely, these are the RAW files edited to kind of look like my Canon look. And there's gummy bear dancing and great. So I got the ambient room and I was able to play around with uh, flash powers up and down. But then I started to notice 
that not every shot was in focus. Like for example, here's my son and I had a, he had a great expression on his face and when I checked it on the camera, it was not in focus. And I, of course I retook the photograph, but what's his expression in the second photograph, the one that's clear is not as good, which is frustrating. I bank on getting that first shot all the time. And so here's another example, great smile. And for some reason, the, the camera didn't focus on her face on my subject's face. And so I had her reset up again and her smile is pretty much close, but the first one was a genuine smile. So that was a little annoying as well. And then when I was on the dance floor, I was missing a lot of shots and, and things that I would hit with my Canon all the time. Uh, great moments like this. Uh, it's like a common thing to grab. Um, where I'd have to be a little bit more deliberate, and this is a great shot, I love this shot, but I had to be a little bit more deliberate and concentrate to get clear shots. That last one and this one were both in focus. And once started, once like motion started and a lot of dancing, um, here's a dab that I completely missed, uh, I started to struggle a little bit. I was missing great expressions and getting more expressions that were after the fact. So the camera was obviously not as fast as the Canon 5D Mark IV. I felt it was great at if people were posed and still, I could focus and fire and it hit 100% of the time. Motion was the problem. So I was a little disappointed with the autofocus. Uh, when I first came back and I looked at the photographs, there were a lot of misses, like way too many misses. And what I did was I came back to the office and I tried to figure out why there were so many misses and I figured it out. So it turns out that I use the back button focus and on my Canon 5D Mark IV, this puppy is fast. It's like, it just really quickly grabs focus and then I can shoot. So back button focus, grab something and then shoot. Now, I thought that the Fuji X-T20 uh, was actually doing that, but it wasn't. And what was strange is I was getting autofocus confirmation. If I would back button focus, I would get a green square and the little green dot that we learned in our autofocus video and I would shoot and the picture would be in focus. If I saw something quickly happening and turned, hit the back button focus, again on the screen I could see the green square and the green dot and I would shoot, but that second picture would be out of focus. So what I did was I came back to the office later after seeing a lot of misses and I decided to try it, okay? So I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you that right now. All right guys, so I'm gonna try to show you what was going on while I was at the party and then I'll show you how I discovered the whole autofocus not really being locked if it's green thing. Here I have a Batgirl and Hulk and they are a distance apart. I've set my exposure to be about one and a half to two stops below the room temperature temperature. The flash I've set to 16th power. Now just know if you're working with manual flash that whatever's closer to you will be a little brighter than whatever's further for you. If you shoot TTL flash the camera will know that this thing is that Hulk is further and so it'll give you a little bit more light but right now I'm just going to leave it on manual and so Batgirl will be a little bit bright and Hulk will be a little bit dark but we're just worried about the autofocus for now. If you were working a party, what you could do is just if something's a little further away, you just pop your power like a dimmer switch. You just pop up one or two clicks and then bam, you get a little bit more light on your subject. Or fix it in post. That's what all the pros do. <laughs> First, I'm going to start with no beep. So I, I always turn off all the s s focus beeps and everything and I go with the visual uh, confirmation, which is the green, the back of the camera. So here we go. All right, so let's start with Batgirl. We'll do 10 shots. I'll only shoot if I see green confirmation and then move to the other subject and back and forth. And let's see out of the 10 how we do. Okay, so here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, so now we turned our beep on. Just go to your wrench and go to sound setup and we're turning our beep all the way up. So now if I have, you hear that? 
Okay, so now we can only shoot if we hear the sound. So here we go. See what it did there? So, although I lift my finger up and am hitting the finger again, it seems like the camera needs to sort of clear up its memory or whatever of the last autofocus lock. See? So there, I got a beep, and then here I got a green square, no beep. Now, if I wasn't using the sound, I would have shot because I saw a green. You see? So right now, if I zoom in, Hulk is completely out of focus, even though I had a green confirmation. Okay, so with the beep, you can confirm. Um, see what I'm saying? It'll grab onto focus. But if I go too fast, let's try it again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. See, I don't think that was in focus. Oh yeah, totally in focus. Sorry. Sorry, sorry. I doubted you. Here we go. See? I'm going to hold it right now. I'm holding it. So I'm zooming in. Hulk is completely out of focus. But if I was shooting with no sound and a loud club, I totally would have shot this picture. And so I was getting blurry shots from a green square confirmation. Lift up finger, beep. See, I lifted up my finger there again for a millisecond and Batgirl is blurry. Notice, weird, right? So the green, I learned that the green box and that green dot, if I would see it visually, didn't necessarily mean that there was focus confirmation and I could fire. I was moving too fast for the camera. If, so visually it's back button focus, fire, let go, two, three, four, back button focus, fire. So it's like half a second more to really let go of that last focus. Now again, I did try with this and the uh, using the shutter and the shutter did the same thing. So there you have it guys, the mini event rig. Look, I'm learning all the time, again from you guys and from using the camera, the fact that you have to take your finger off the auto exposure lock and focus again that was a new discovery so huge huge knowing that though if you if you kind of know how your gear works you can work around a lot of its limitations so i will try again i will absolutely try again with it and report back but for now my go-to i'm sorry oh my god look how huge this is i'll see you guys next time for our next video keep shooting out there keep shooting keep commenting keep subscribing and i'll see you guys next time